Watching KATC TV3, Acadiana's news channel at 6. Plane just crashed. This this is a plane crash. Just witness it. Terrific. My God. Yeah, it's shocking. My heart was blowing for the first time. My heart just like wanted to stop and give up and and take dead place and I just feel like it's, it's pain. And pain for the family and all that. And, Five people are dead and four others are in critical condition after a plane crash one mile from the Lafayette Airport. That crash happened around 920 this morning, shortly after the small plane took off. The pilot Ian Biggs and four passengers, Gretchen Vincent, Michael Walker Vincent, Carly McCord and Robert Vaughn Crisp died in that crash. The sixth person on board identified as Stephen Wade Burzas is in critical condition at the hospital. Five of the six have ties to the local company Global Data Systems. Gretchen Vincent and her son Walker were the wife and son of the company's president. Crisp and Burzas are listed on the company's website as vice presidents. According to Biggs's LinkedIn profile, he was a pilot and aircraft manager for the company for nearly two decades. McCord, meanwhile, was a freelance sports reporter for Cox Sports, ESPN and WDSU in New Orleans. She was also the daughter in law of LSU offensive coordinator Steve Ensminger. All right, Andrew Clay joins us in the studio with more about the life and career of Carly McCord. Andrew. Well, Kendria, there were many tears being shed around the LSU football team during their pregame routine this afternoon. Carly was on her way to Atlanta for today's Peach Bowl. She was the daughter of LSU offensive coordinator Steve Ensminger. Here is the coach before today's Peach Bowl. According to ESPN's game broadcast, it was actually coach Ed Orgeron who broke the news to Ensminger. On top of being a freelance reporter, many also know her as the Saints and Pelicans in-game host. The Pelicans and Saints released a statement this afternoon in part reading, Carly was a valued member of both our New Orleans Saints and New Orleans Pelicans family as an in-game host and her infectious personality and knowledge of both teams entertained our fans. Not only was Carly an excellent representative of the Saints and Pelicans organization, she was also a highly respected member of the media. Social media has come out in droves. The Saints Michael Thomas writing that he was just watching her reporting yesterday, adding life is so short, really wishing I could do something. Matt Moscona from ESPN and Baton Rouge shared Carly's final Instagram story, which was a quote, only rainbows after rain and the sun will always come again. And Sports Illustrated's Ross Dellinger shared a story about Steve from Steven Ensminger. It was an anecdote about his son in part reading. He is the toughest guy I know. Now, Ensminger is still coaching the Peach Bowl, which we'll have more on in sports. His daughter-in-law, Carly, was 30 years old. Kendria? Three bystanders are battling life-threatening injuries, including one who's a familiar face to some KATC viewers. Danielle Truxillo Britt was in a car that was hit by the plane as it crashed. According to her family, Danielle suffered burns on about 30% of her body, mostly on her right side. She's being treated at a New Orleans hospital, and her family says she's in great spirits. Danielle is a survivor of childhood cancer. We first interviewed her about her journey with St. Jude in the mid-1990s. She was diagnosed with non Hodgkin, not Hodgins, lymphoma as a seven year old. She went into remission less than three weeks into treatment, and we've done stories on St. Jude with her throughout the years. At the crash site, the investigation will be continuing into the night. Our Chris Welty is live near the scene. Chris, what time will federal investigators be arriving? Kendria, the NTSB should arrive around 9 o'clock tonight. Until then, local law enforcement will continue guarding the crash site. Right now, there's still many questions surrounding what happened before the plane came down. This, this is a plane crash. Just witness it. Terrific. Oh, my God. Fire and smoke filled the gloomy sky less than a mile from the Lafayette Regional Airport. This small plane crashing at 922 Saturday morning. Eight minutes later, first responders were on scene. We have to heal, but we have to get through this process. That's going to be a slow process, not only for the families and the victims, but also for the first responders. Details on the reason for the crash have not been released, but witnesses say that the plane, which is a small eight passenger plane, hit a power line. Do y'all have any information on if the pilot made any distress calls or anything like that before the crash happened? All that's going to come from the NTSB. You're not going to get anything from us pertaining to what happened other than what you've seen so far that we've given you. 
Witnesses say the plane hit two cars in a nearby post office parking lot before exploding in a field behind the Pinhook Walmart. The explosion shattering the post office windows. Thoughts and prayers are with the families right now. At this point, there's an investigation that's underway that will continue for the next several days or weeks even. It's a sad thing. It's a tragic event. Uh, it, it, it hurts, you know, because you feel for the families, you know, and um, it's something that we, we know we're going to get through. We just have to make sure that we, we keep God first. Following the crash, roughly 200 people were without power. Power has since been restored and the roads around the crash site have since reopened. But do use caution if you are in the area because a lot of police, they're still on the sides of the road guarding the crash site. Live in Latvia, Chris Wells, team KTC. The team has been digging all day for details about the crash. We've learned the plane is a Piper twin turboprop like the one you see right here. The registered owner of the plane is Cheyenne Partners LLC based out of Lafayette. According to the flight plan, the plane took off at about 920 this morning and was scheduled to land at DeKalb Peachtree Airport just outside Atlanta two hours later. According to flight tracker data, the plane crashed less than a minute after takeoff. The flight plan also says the plane last flew on December 18th, going from Houston to Lafayette. The FAA says the plane crashed under unknown circumstances. And all day long, we have been hearing from people who saw the plane crash. Jordan Lippincott is near the crash scene with those reactions. Jordan. Well, witnesses say they couldn't believe what happened. One gentleman we spoke with lives in a nearby apartment complex. He says he noticed the plane was flying. He noticed the plane was was flying lower than unusual. Moments later, the plane hit a utility pole and then two vehicles before crashing in the field behind the post office. The plane then ignited into flames. The two vehicles also caught fire and the impact of the crash blew out the windows of the post office. And when he trying all his might to lift up to pick up the pain, but the pain was already too low. And that's when it hit the, the post. And when it hit the post, he nothing he could do about it. And he did his my he did, I know he did his best. And I know he did his power for that. And I just the only thing I just gotta say, I'm praying for his family, man. And as the investigation continues into why the plane went down, some are questioning if weather played a role in the crash. Meteorologist Eric Zernick joins us in the weather lab with more on the weather conditions. Eric. Yeah, there is a slight possibility that fog might have been an issue. Like the last several mornings, we woke up to some patchy fog across the area. Visibilities were down around a mile from many locations at 7 a.m. We'll move this forward to about 915 when that plane did take off. Some visibilities were improving, especially in Abbeville and New Iberia, but you can see still here in Lafayette, visibility was below one mile. Now, usually with fog and it comes to plane crashes, especially during takeoff, normally if fog was an issue, the plane would have over went the runway and went right into the throughway. But since it was able to get above ground, I think maybe there was an issue with the plane and they tried to circle back. Now because of that fog, they couldn't see where that runway might have been, causing him to maybe go at a lower altitude, which then eventually made him clipping that power line just a mile from getting to that runway. So that's how fog might have played into that, but I don't think it played into a factor of it getting off the ground, maybe just coming back to the airport. Outside of the fog, we still had a good bit of cloud cover 